Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel where the gnomes live. This is Sharon Oyella and this is part three of how to make a rat series. If you've missed the previous two videos, you can find those up here in the iCard and also look in the description box below. And if you're here from part two and you want to continue making your rat, this is a video where we're going to add his skin and his fur. So the first step we need to do is add his skin and for that we're going to be using glue and paper towel. So the glue that I use for this doesn't have to be the expensive kind, you just find a cheap uh, PVA glue, a school glue, or any sort of white glue will do. You can use tacky glue of course, but that's a little bit more expensive for this step. And then the paper towel. I have a two-ply paper towel and this is just a cheap brand from Walmart. If you have a three-ply, you need to take one of the plies off because that's going to be too many and you'll risk having some of the skin peeling off later. So just make sure you peel one of the plies off. That's only if you have a three-ply paper towel. If you have a two-ply like I have here, you don't have to remove one of the layers. You can leave it alone. So the next step that we need to do to prepare this piece of paper towel is tear it down into smaller pieces. Because he has such a small body, I'm going to be working with small pieces. Just like regular paper mache, all the edges should be torn. And this is about the size that I want to work with. And if your paper towel has a, a heavy duty design on it and it's going to show through, it doesn't matter where we're going to be putting the, the fur because the fur is going to cover that anyway. But an area like this, right here on the bottom of the foot, if your paper towel has a heavy duty design, you could take, even if it's a two ply, split the plies and use the side that doesn't have the design for this little area here. And now this glue is pretty thick. So when I'm brushing it onto the rat's body, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to work with. So I'm just going to throw in a little bit of water, not too much, just a little bit. And that's just going to make it easier to work with. And then I'll stir that up. There's no recipe to follow, guys. You just throw in a little bit of water. I think that was about a tablespoon or so. You'll know when you're feeling it yourself how easy it is to brush on. piece of paper towel over and then brush glue over top that and this is going to be his skin and we are going to be painting this after it's dry and you don't have to worry so much about wrinkles and stuff like that because we're going to be putting fur over top and you won't see it anyway but you don't want any major wrinkles but if you have little ones that's totally fine and of course you overlap But I was just coming to the heel and I thought I'd stop and show you what I do with this part here. Because I'm going to be painting this heel anyway. So I'm going to use my paper towel as a little bit of skin over that heel. Even though this isn't going to get any fur on it. I can paint it to look like skin. And also on that masking tape, put some paper towel. And again, we're going to be painting this. So I just go to where my twine starts and I'm just going to work that in, the paper towel. A little bit with my fingernail. And now I'll just cover it all with glue. And then later on, I can paint that. It will look all like one piece. And when it starts to get too difficult to work with, just sit it down in front of a fan and let it dry for a few minutes. I'd give it about 15, 20. And then it'll be dry enough to the touch and then you can continue on with the rest of the body and you want to make sure everything is covered with the paper towel. Everything aside from our twine that we worked with here. We're not going to be covering the arms and we won't be covering the tail and we won't be covering those toes. So everything else gets the paper towel. Anything with masking tape. So this is still damp but it's dry to the touch and it's not so messy when I'm working with it. So I set it in front of the fan for about 20 minutes and now I'm going to work on the top of his head. But I'll just show you real quick. I got un around his arms done, all of his body, around the tail. And it looks like here I didn't add anything. It just kind of disappears. But I did add it there. And you do need to add it on every bit of that masking tape and that will help with the painting. So I got it tucked underneath here. Okay, so now I'm going to be working on the face, and I just thought I'd pop in because to do little uh, details like this inside the mouth and stuff, of course you want to start in there first. It's much easier to work with smaller pieces, and it doesn't matter how much you layer them and all that kind of stuff. You just want to make sure that you can get it in there without making great big wrinkles. 
So I'll just do the mouth on camera and then I'll turn the camera off. So I'll just get the glue in there. And now I can put a piece. I'll just tuck it right like that. And now I'll use my paintbrush to kind of push it into place. And so for a piece like this, it could also be a little bit helpful to just slit the edges. And that'll help it roll over the edges a little bit easier. Alright guys, I'll continue off camera and then we'll come back when it's all dry and we'll start painting. Alright, he's been sitting in front of the fan for about 20 minutes and he's dry to the touch. There's parts of him that are still wet underneath. When he's dry completely, it turns this color here. So it will look like the color of the masking tape, but you can see the paper towel is over top. Inside there, I did take the back end of my paintbrush and I dipped it in glue and then ran it inside, made sure I got everything all down. Because when I'm done, I'm going to be painting his throat black. So it'll look like he's got an actual throat there. So I want to make sure all the paper was down. And yeah, he looks really good. This is exactly what he should look like. All the wrinkles, little tiny dents and all that's all fine. The fur is going to cover him. So I brought in one of my original little creations doing this exact same method. And her name is Harriet. And she was made the exact same way. And underneath her fur, that's what she looks like right there. But for now, we should get back to this guy. He's waiting for his paint. And at the moment that I'm filming this, I have no idea what color I'm painting him. So I'm just going to turn the camera off and I'll be back with his paint and a paintbrush and we'll get started. Okay, I'm going to touch up his feet before we do anything else. And I'm not sure if I'm going to keep what color his nose is going to be. Should it be black? Or the skin color? I'm not sure. I'll just paint it skin color since I have it out and if I want to change it after I will. And then just around here. And again I can change this. I'll just get a little bit of color on there anyway. Okay, inside the ear I just pushed a little indent with my brush, the back end of my brush, and on this side too. And I can put a darker color in there to make it look like he has an ear hole. And these are all things that you can play around with. You don't have to do exactly what I'm doing. Definitely want to do this before you start any color on the outside because you can see I messed up here. <laughs> but that's okay. I can paint over that. Just want to get this part in here done. Alright, it looks pretty horrifying right now. So I did um, burnt sienna and then I took a wet paintbrush with a little bit of pink on it and just went over with the water and I rubbed it in with my finger just to lighten up that burnt sienna and I got black in the very back. It's hard to see in the video. I did a black outline around these indents and I'm just thinking when I add my white paint and then my fur, we'll just have a little bit of a shadow there. I'm hoping anyway. And same as here. So that's what I did with the black. And now I'm just going to put a sealer on these lips to give a little bit of a shine so they look wet. This is a satin sealer so it's not going to be that shiny. Just on the lips and up here. And the nose, I'm still not sure about color. I might change it, but if I keep it there, I would like to have a little bit of a shine on that as well. And I'll put a little bit in the ear. So in the end, the very back of his throat got black paint. All around his lips and inside his mouth and up top here underneath his nose, all is burnt sienna. The tip of his nose got burnt sienna. And skin tone on his ears, a little bit of black in that hole. And that black around these creases in his mouth, I think that turned out as well. And I did a black outline around his feet, but you don't have to do that. It's just something that, it's just a minor, minor detail. I don't even know if that makes a difference. I did, however, think this turned out here, the black in between his legs there. It just makes it look a little bit more deep and makes his legs look a little bit more separated there. Of course, and then touched up his feet. 
And colors, of course, are all optional. I just wanted to make sure that you had a good idea what I did there. So the last step before we have to do before we give him fur is paint his body the same or similar color to the fur that you're going to give him. In my case, he's going to be white, so I'm going to paint his body white. And I'll be painting his arms just down to a certain spot, like right about there, and I'll stop. And his tail is going to go white as well. All right, I got him all painted and he's dry. Anyway, he's ready for his fur now. So I am going to collect some yarn. So this little bunch here is yarn that I've just cut up into little tiny pieces. And that amount right there is a small bundle that you'd get from a bundle like this. So I just wrapped it around my hand and now I'm going to cut right through the bottom so I get strands. And now all you have to do is just trim the ends so you don't want to cut anything bigger than what I'm doing right now now it's been a while since I've made one of these characters so I'm thinking this is going to be enough that was those two bundles that I showed you in the previous clip two of those bundles and if not, then I can just make another bundle quick enough to do. So now the magic happens. We're going to be adding his fur. So I'm just going to pour out some of my tacky glue. Okay, and I'm going to start at the top of his head. And again, you want to use straight tacky glue. Don't mix it with anything. And tacky glue is best for this part. And we're just going to paint on the glue. And I'm going to do small sections at a time. I'll do the very top of his head and the back of his ears. So anywhere you want the fur to be, you paint the glue on. And now I'm just going to take the fur in small bunches and just push it in. And then I'm just going to go around with my hands and just push it in. Okay, so once you got that done, then you can just go on and paint some glue on another spot. And I'll do right under here and follow the outline of your paint. And it looks like I'm going to have to cut more yarn. So those two bundles wasn't enough. Okay, so my little spot here that I wanted to look like he has legs, I'll just put glue on either side of that black and I actually forgot about that little spot otherwise I would have done that first when I started the body and don't worry if you miss any spots we can always go over those spots and I'll show you that in the next step oh he's looking so cute oh I love him <laughs> oh you get to love them when you're the mother <laughs> all right I'm gonna set him aside 30 minutes 45 minutes we'll come back Alright guys, popping in again to make sure that you get that part really clear that you're to push it all into the body as you're going along. So you put the fur on, then you go over it and push down, and push down firmly. So you squish all that fur into the glue. So in the last clip I said to leave him dry for about 30 to 45 minutes, but I would actually leave him longer. I think an hour is safer because in the next step we have to brush off the top coat and what's left underneath will be his final coat so you just want to make sure that that glue is completely dry otherwise you'll be brushing it off and um, taking that glue with it so I would say an hour hour and a half leave him it's actually the next day I had to uh, shut it down last night and go to sleep so I haven't taken any of the fur off but it's obviously dry so I'm going to take a stiff brush and I'm not done adding the fur yet but I'll add more after so I'm just brushing off all the fur that's just sitting on top and what's left underneath will be his final coat of fur. So this turned out, I didn't think it would but it did. There's a couple of bare patches that I'll have to redo and we'll do that in a minute because I have to do his arms and his tail yet. 
with the stuff we brushed off. I wouldn't use it, although it looks like it'd be ready to use. It's got little harder flakes in it from the glue, and I have some flakes in there from my brush as well. So I would just discard this. I would just make some fresh stuff, which I've done here. And I'm going to get my glue, and I'll do his arms. All right, my friends, this is the future me popping in. This is about two or three days after I was attaching the fur to him. And you can see, after much movement, there is a crack here. And that's not the twine, that's just the fur. And it's cracking away from the body. Now, I'm going to address it at the end of this video. I'm going to show you how I'm going to try to fix it. So there's a couple things to keep in mind. Without the wire in there, without the posability of his arms, the fur is going to turn out just fine. Or, if you're planning on dressing him, it's a non-issue. All of my creatures before him got clothes, so none of them got fur on their arms anyway. But you can see he's a few years old and all the fur that I put on his head and his nose and everywhere is still totally intact. There's no problems there. It's just with that little extra bit of movement there, underneath the arms and the base of the tail. The rest of his tail is totally fine. There's no cracking or breaking away from that fur. So these are things to keep in mind. If you're going to be selling something like this, probably wouldn't want to have them with posable arms or a posable tail. Anyway, we'll address it again at the end of this video, so do watch it right to the end and keep this in mind as you're working on your rat. That's probably going to happen if you have wires in his arms as well. But if you're going to dress him, then that's a non-issue. And then any bare patches, you just go over with your glue. What I did do was go along and trim off flyaways there, things that are sticking up, because his tail should be a little more smoother. And then I noticed on his lip, I did get glue and yarn there, and I can't get it off, so I'm going to just touch up with my paintbrush. And don't be afraid to do this sort of thing. You can just touch up where you need to. All right, guys, it's been about uh, two or three days since I put his fur on, and I did notice that when I'm lifting here, there's a separation right here. Now, I was expecting something like that because, like I told you earlier, in the past, whenever I've done these sort of methods over wire, the, it can separate. Now, this is not separating like it used to in the past as badly. Um, I think that twine is an excellent choice. But I'm just going to touch up these areas. I'm not going to leave it overnight, and I'm going to let you know what it's like tomorrow. It could just be it needs a little bit more fur in those areas. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend this as far as I can, right back there, and then get the glue in there and push in some fur. On these little areas like this, I mean if you're dressing your rat and it's going to have clothes and stuff like that, then this would be a non-issue. But for me, I don't want to put clothes on him. I wanted him to just have his fur and a cape and a hat and that's it. Alright guys, I'm going to leave him dry and then I'll give you an update on what it looks like in part 4 of this video series. Alright my friends, we'll continue working on him in part 4. And in part 4 we're going to be adding his teeth, his whiskers and his eyes. So we're almost there. We're almost done our rat. So you can click that box that's popping up on your screen and I'll meet you over in the next video. I'll see you there.